So I'm traveling 6,000 miles to play this DP World Tour golf course. I'm heading down there for two months to play professional golf tournaments and make really, really good content. So come with me on the journey, John. Let's get to Joburg. Okay, so we're at the North Terminal at Gatwick. I was actually told to go to the South and uh, all the other people at the hotel were told, told to go to the wrong terminals. I didn't check myself, so I'm not gonna blame anyone. Um, but I've left four hours early, so it's no stress. It's like a two minute, two minute trip from the South to the North. So we're gonna head over, find my airline, which I cannot wait to fly with. I've heard really good things, um, but as soon as I say I'm flying with Ethiopian Airways, everyone goes, ooh, ooh, not sure about that. There's the bad boy plane. Massive, man. Jeez. The majority of the flight's done. Uh, that was like seven hour flight. Now we've got three and a half hour layover, which we're halfway through. Now we're flying, I think it's 11.30 departure. Landing at 4.05 a.m. It's 4 a.m. local time, Joburg. I don't know how to sleep. This is where we see if I've got my bags or not. It's 5.10 a.m. in Joburg, so it's just like a really awkward time, so I don't really know what to do. Like, there's like nowhere to go, like everything was shut in the airport, so I can't like sit there, have breakfast, have a coffee. So I've ordered an Uber to the hotel that I'm staying at for the next five days before I move into my usual accommodation. Uh, and I'm just gonna go there and hope that, or just hope that they can just let me chill, maybe get some breakfast there and hopefully get an early check-in. But yeah, we shall see. Had a little call with my missus and Renly, Renly the Retriever, as well, last night. And that's the only tough bit about coming away. But she's like super understanding. Um, she couldn't be better with it, to be fair. Um, but Renly's not very understanding. I saw Renly last night on the sofa looking really sad. Because uh, he'll probably be like, oh, why isn't James coming home? So I think he sort of like looks at the door for a few days. But when, when I get my luggage, when I get my luggage out and he sees me packing, I think he associates me packing my luggage with me being away for a while. So I think he's probably going to be a bit miserable for a few days at home. Uh, but at least Nat's there to, uh, to make him feel better. <sighs> yeah, it's always a tough bit. Huh? Right, we're freshened up, got a haircut, sorted myself out, had a shower, got in the room, and now we're off to Joburg, Royal Joburg, to play some golf. Weather is not quite the usual weather in South Africa, but it's not the end of the world, it's not raining, it's just like, I don't know, about 18 degrees. A bit of a chilled northerly wind. It's my Uber. Let's get down there. This is what we come for. Jacarandas in bloom. Beautiful. Look at this. Apparently they've only had the rains like two days ago. So, over the winter they get zero rain. So obviously opposite seasons, different hemispheres, Shan. Um, so in their winter they get no rain at all and then it gets to this time of year and then they just all wait for the rains to come it warms up and then you get thundery showers every other day in the afternoon pretty much like clockwork and that gets the course all green and luscious so i'd say it's probably like a week away and needs a couple more rains and it'd be like bright green but i mean it don't get much better than this does it sun's coming out oh i'm excited Pretty sick there. Right, so I'm here with Gav, the main man at Royal. You played a bit on tour yourself, didn't you? 
um, years. 38 years. <laughs> That's quite a long time. Nice. So what's going on down here? They're doing a lot of work. Yeah, we're rebuilding our whole facility. So we've tripled the size of our chipping um, and bunker play padding area. Yeah. And we've redone our whole team as well. We've, oh, it looks amazing. We've made it 15 bays more because yeah. we're hoping we're going to get people to practice a little bit more. So yeah, we want 100%. to make the facility great like Royal Jehobe, uh, Johannesburg Golf Club is. We want to just make it better. Of course. So a beach we can have a look. Yeah. So a massive flat grass range yeah. and, and then a load of... A load of uh, what are they artificial greens, I'm guessing. Uh, these are target greens, yeah. Yep. So we've put our first four in. Uh -huh. um, we're still waiting to do the flags. So everything probably opening 100% November. Nice. And then next year we're going to build another two more. Oh, really? So, um, yeah, That's we want to make really the, nice. the golfers a little bit more accurate. Decent. But, you know, um, modernize everything. You know, yeah. everything today is about targets and things uh -huh. like that. So um, we want to just make, make it better for our, our members Good so man. they can come here. How have you been anyway? I've been How's great. How's the winter been? Uh, the winter's been good. It's yeah. been very mild. We've had no rain and it's been, uh, I, I think we only had two or three cold weeks and so it's been really good. When you say cold, what do you mean? Uh, cold for Sahara is about well, like 15? Five, <laughs> five degrees in the morning. In the morning, yeah. And during the day about 18. So, <laughs> so people, that's cold, that's people cold for from us, the yeah. UK are going to laugh at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the UK. I, I spend a lot of time in the UK. Um, our winters are like uh, your summers, you know, probably. Literally. Yeah. Our summers this year has been awful as well. I, I have seen that. It's been yeah. wet and not very warm. No, exactly. But you know, you've got to play golf in all conditions. So, yeah. you know, you're adapting. I'm glad I'm here. Yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> glad to have you. Right, they're nine holes. Royal Joburg. Let's see what we've got. Every shot. Right, 160. Anywhere front trap. We're just left of it. Yeah, like I was saying, they probably need like a couple more rains and this place just absolutely pops. It's the same with all the South African courses. They get this uh, dormant Bermuda, as you can see it's starting to come to life now, where it'd be like almost like orangey yellow throughout the whole winter and then the rains come and it all like comes to life and goes green. So golf courses go from like orange to like bright vibrant green looking unreal in the course of like a week or two so yeah we've come actually come at a really good time apparently over the last week it's been really hot as well so it's been up to mid 30s and then i think i brought the shite weather with me to be fair because this morning it was like 10 degrees with a cold drizzle just testing the sound was a bit harder than that. Ha. Back to Kikuyu. Got to start with the conversation that we have every single year when we get out here. We're in Joburg. It's elevated. You know what's coming if you've watched this before. It's elevated is playing around 10% difference. So all these numbers that I'm gonna be calling are meters, but because there's a 10% change, it converts pretty much exactly to yards. So imagine I'm just playing the yardage basically as the meter. Does that make any sense? So this is 230 and it's downhill. Don't wanna go long. So it's probably a good five iron. Right, well actually, Sort of didn't take any time on that partner first, but we'll um, we'll see what we can score through nine holes. We'll we'll score properly, and uh, yeah, anything around level par will be a nice start. Little, 
bit of a push. Like, it, I'm probably naturally going to be aiming slightly right. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out a way of sorting that out. I'll probably just pick out like an intermediary target on the tee just to get parallel with that and then get in there. See if that does the job. Also, I've not got my external mic today, but there's no wind, so like the audio should be absolutely fine. Uh, it's just usually I'll film with the little uh, mic that goes on, but yeah, today we'll have to do with this, but I'm still going to do the job. I'm actually, su I'm surprisingly feeling alright as well, honestly, I thought I'd be in the bin. Um, I thought my social battery would be at an absolute minimum as well, but... Um, I've met like all the people at Royal and uh, yeah, just friendly bastards here they are, friendly bastards. Look at that pace, as in like not me, yeah, the greens are quick. Sounds right. Yeah, probably running at least like 10. Like, I want to say 10.5 maybe, but that may just be because I'm used to English greens in October, which run at 2.3. Look what we have here, John. They're using the black tea. They never use this tea. What a bruise of a hole this is, by the way. <laughs> Jesus. Anyone who hits a slice or a cut, this will give you nightmares. So this is 4.55 and just because this tree gets in the way the it just it just makes it so much tighter i'm probably hitting like a just like a slight draw so it's not too bad for me at the moment but it's ob all along this wall that's actual actually huddle park another golf course just over there um so i'm going to try and keep this as tight to this tree as possible and then it will carry the ones that are a bit further up Tiny bit healy. Should be short of that. Okay, 170. Stock nine. Just a bit into, but won't really affect it, I don't think. Half a club short. Wildlife chat. We got the Egyptian goose. Oh, got the Egyptian goose. <laughs> um, over there. I can't zoom in and they're going to run away, but they're Egyptian geese and those other birds, I can't remember what they're called now, but they're dangerous. So they're like super protective. So if they've got little ones around and you go anywhere near them, They'll start chirping at you and flying around. If you go, if you keep going, going near their little ones, they will head like dive bomb you onto the top of your head with their beaks and can literally crack your skull. Um, I've been told that's a hardy dar, prehistoric-looking bastard. Those are the ones that keep making noise. You'll hear it every now and again. I won't try and imitate it. But within the next 60 seconds, you would have heard a hardy dar. But it's like a really like aggressive, <laughs> but more aggressive. Hear that? Yeah. That's them. Why haven't you done the dishes yet? Why haven't you done the dishes yet? 115. Playing a bit uphill. Can I play this about 120? I mean, it's not the end of the world, it's like 10 foot right, but that's the one where I'm just getting a, just a little bit too ahead of it. 
Just a tad. So yeah, the stuff with Liam's going really well at the moment, so I'm working on... Um, I'm just doing the drills that he's giving me. So I'm really focusing on that step drill, which I was doing on the range. I, I, always, I always start with that one arm off drill. Really gets me in a nice position for pitching. And then I'll do the step off drill and hit. That keeps the pelvis high and really gets me onto the golf ball nicely. Um, and when I'm on the golf course, I do that pre-shot and then when I, yeah, that's literally like 10 foot. I'll do that pre-shot and then when I step into it, I'll just have those feelings in my head. Um, but I've managed now to get to a point, and honestly, it's never felt this good, um, where I'm actually on top of the golf ball. So impact, um, off, and then like getting on it and it was before it was like hips would go here and upper body would go back but now I'm like upper body's on it and from there you can like just release the hands but not release them like this way release them this way so the club, fa club face stays super stable and yeah you just get on top of it and compress it but sometimes I'll probably just go a bit far on it and catch it a little skinny but I mean, it's going to take a while to work that out, but it's not a bad miss. There you go, look. Okay, beautiful par three, 166. Pin to the back, downhill, 160-ish number, maybe wind into a bit. Yeah, like 162, probably back to the pin, and a safe cover of the waters, 155, so probably just hit a little nine. All right, five two five from the back tee. Water comes out around three hundred on the right, around two ninety bunkers on the left. So, what I usually do is just try and hit a two iron as well as I can, and then if we're far enough down, I mean, there's going to be zero roll on this. There's a chance that we can go at this with four iron from like two forty if we get it far enough down. It's okay. Bit toey slappy. Oh, it's right on the edge. 250 cover for the water. Uh, I mean, I have got two iron. It's just I'm not a massive fan of hitting that off the deck. To be honest, I'm a bit stuck in my bag at the moment because I've taken the three iron out to make space for another wedge. So we've got the Mizuno uh, T24s and I've got 48, 52, 56, 60. I wanted more wedges because that's just like a yardage. I have a lot. I have a lot of wedges, so it makes sense having like more wedges and less at the top end because you know I've not got many. Don't hit many three irons apart from off the tee. But what I really need out here, so I might look around for one, is like a, like a rescue, like a utility. Well, a utility type rescue that's got a bit more meat on it. That you can actually send it up because there's two irons just like honestly it's just flat and it goes miles and i really like it but it's great in england but over here where it's pretty much all carry and you want it a bit of elevation it's not quite as good so yeah we'll, we'll see about that but let's give it a hit i mean two irons uh two irons are good Probably like a 260 carry, I'd say. So we're just going to aim right side of the green. If I hit it shit, it won't. Splash. Just not a massive fan of that thing off the deck. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because I'm 
to like changing stuff with my swing, and I'm just not quite there with it yet. Um, but yeah, I just really want like something a bit more meatier that can send it up a bit more spin. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look around while I'm at it. Okay, 60 degree, that's 76. We got to pitch this a couple long. This is where all that warm up stuff on the range got to like get those feels. like two yards short that still feels like a tiny bit draggy like the range stuff I'm going like off on and then release that hand so it gets it like releasing this way and that just felt a bit on it and then a bit draggy and you just don't quite get the same strike so you just got to get there but I mean it's a lot better than it was I'm also still doing online lessons out here by the way, so I've had quite a lot come through over the last couple of days. And it's kind of nice because I can you know, do the videos, work on my gameplay tournaments, and that's also quite a nice little uh, side thing I can do. I've got quite a lot of time out here just because, like, what else am I going to do? Like, obviously I'm not with the missus out here. Um, I've got mates out here obviously, but I play golf with them, so... My time here really is just golf, gym, and editing, and then online coaching. So yeah, if you wanted to do anything over the winter, there is a code you can use, and it's Cubal John 15. It actually is. Basically, takes online lessons below 40 quid. What's that now? What are we? Um, still one over. Bogey on the first. And then all pars. Like really exciting. So that shot there is a shot that I used to hit a lot. So what I've done there, because there's tall trees and I'm trying to launch it, I'm not like as confident getting through it so that's the one where I'm off of it and then I don't get onto the ball and I just spin and that's a shot that I used to hit a lot where I sort of like spin behind it where I've lost my pelvis and then it's like a hip stop flip can be toey but generally just like a dead a dead hook um, the ball flight when I'm getting stuff right now when I get on it is much lower, like a penetrating ball flight that's going forward towards target. And when I'm trying to hit it over something very high, it just doesn't feel as comfortable. Oh my god, look, it's a parakeet! I think you missed that. Wow. <laughs> I said we got lucky, but we got got this square root of f old here, bit. Okay, 57 playing 60. Yeah, it's pretty good. Thing to remember though, right? So, let's think back to a year, or at least like a, yeah, I mean, you know what, it's like a couple years ago, I'd have parted that. Um, like even as, as little as a year ago like my low point control was so bad with the wedge and it was all down to it was all down to essentially my low point going back because of tilts so I would start quite tilted and then I had the tendency to like tilt even more and to get the low point at the golf ball it's pretty much impossible so you can either set your tilts left and just really focus on keeping them there and uh, that stuff I did with Steve chipping really really helps by the way if you're struggling with fat and chips so 
you get a alignment rod, put it just near your left hip, and you try and feel like you're tilting slightly to the left rather than tilting this way when you chip in. And you want to feel like you don't, you basically miss the alignment rod, so you're keeping these tilts. So instead of hitting the alignment rod and going backwards and your low point going backwards, you're keeping the hip here. And if anything, you want to feel like your upper body almost like outraces it and then your low point goes even more forward. So that really helps for chipping, but with the pitching stuff that I'm doing with Liam, I'm getting here. So my upper body is on top of the golf ball and then I can just release it under. So the low point follows pretty much where your upper body is going to be at impact. So I'm now not stood over, you know, like 50, 60 yard pitches, like shitting myself. And that's actually quite good for scoring. Especially when you tend, up, you tend to have quite a lot of 60 yard pitches on like medium length par fours. Like if you can not then either putt it from 50 yards or fat it like three times to get it onto the green, your scoring will be better. It's just something to bear in mind. Right, the only problem with this putt is it's above the hole. This is the quickest, quickest green, most slopey, sorry, the most severe slope green on the golf course. So this is two cups right. And I've got to give it the little uh, fiddler, I was going to say, probably, probably the inc incorrect terminology for a video on this platform. Definitely a fiddler. Two over par. Two holes left. Two birdie chances. Got a par five up the hill about five, 5.30 or 5.50. And then a par four, which you can cut the corner off and have like 70 in. So got a few good chances. That was the lie. 500, pretty much on the dot. Aiming, there's bunkers right and left, it's quite tight. So trying to split the bunkers. Oh, just a little low. Right, 213. Slightly uphill, down the breeze. 210-ish number. Well, probably playing the number. Um, and the pin is at the back. So six iron's like a 205 number. Yeah, that's good there. Right, there's me saying that's perfect. I literally thought the pin was like back right and I've hit it center. Bit of upslope, kikuyu. Kikuyu, kikui, kikuyu. What dreams are made of this? Upslope Kikuya. Kikui. Bit of a push. Didn't trust it. Okay, 77, spinny green, left to right. We've got to aim like a couple yards left, a couple yards long, that 80 feet of number. It's honestly, that's so much better. Just that action and like the reliable, the reliable low point control is just completely different. When you don't have to worry about low point control, you can just get zoned in on the yardage. And now I really need to get zoned in on the numbers because yeah, I've not really got a great feel for the numbers at the moment. So that is something that we're gonna be doing over the next few days, really dialing in those wedge numbers. So that's all it's about. Hit driver long in play, dial in wedge numbers and putt like And uh, yeah, you can go low. Anyway, 
going to try and hold this, then I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye now. Um, it's been a very long day. Hope you've enjoyed this travel vlog. Um, the energy has probably been a bit lower, as you can probably not understand. I'm absolutely f um, But we're pretty much going to be going daily on the videos all the way out here for the next two months and banging content coming up. So if you haven't subscribed, um, you're a not No, it's a bit harsh. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I wonder if Rick Shields has said that. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, you're a not He's not Scouse, is he?